everybody. Welcome back to Teach Me to Science. My name is Saren, and today we're going to be talking about equilibrium constants. First, we're going to define what they are, then I'm going to tell you how to write them, and finally we'll do some practice problems. When it comes down to it, Q and K, which are equilibrium constants, are basically ratios of products to reactants. If you only leave this video knowing one thing, it should be that Q and K represent a ratio of products to reactants. It's also worth noting that Q describes the ratio of products to reactants when it's not at equilibrium. However, the majority of the problems typically work at equilibrium and use KEQ values. So here's what an expression for a KEQ equation looks like. Notice that it's always going to be products over reactants. You should also notice that the coefficients in front of a variable, like 2 in front of A and 3 in front of B, represent the exponents in the K expression. This means that the concentration of A is raised to the 2 power and concentration of B is raised to the 3. So what does a k value really mean? A k value of greater than 1 means that there are more products than reactants. A k value of less than 1 means that there are more reactants than products. This makes sense because a k value of less than 1 would be a fraction. A fraction would have 1 on the top and a number larger than 1 on the bottom. This would mean that the number of products will be 1 and the number of reactants would be larger than 1. So now that we've talked about K expressions and what they mean, let's practice writing them. Here I've got the reaction CaCO3 solid goes to CaO solid plus CO2 gas. Remember that products over reactants is always our K expression. So our products are the CaO solid and CO2 gas, and our reactants are only the CaCO3 solid. Notice here that there are no coefficients in front of any of our products or reactants. This means that they're all 1. So in our K expression, they will all be raised to 1. Now there's something important here that I've neglected to mention. Solids and liquids are not included in the K expression. This means that only CO2 is included in our K expression. This means that our KEQ is completely dependent on the concentration of CO2. But things can always get harder, right? Pause the video and try and give this next problem a try. So here we have N2 gas plus 3H2 gas goes to 2NH3 gas. All of these are gases, which means they'll all be included in our KEQ expression. So first we have products on top, NH3 concentration raised to the 2 because that's the coefficient in front of it, and the concentration of N2 and H2 go on the bottom, and H2 is raised to the 3 because that's the coefficient in front of H2. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you could, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.